I'm Colin Walls and I'm here once again to talk about embedded software. Today I want to think about interaction with deeply embedded systems. Systems which don't necessarily have a conventional user interface um, but still might need to be able to communicate with the world. Now sometimes actually things like a touch screen, an LCD screen are readily available but Maybe that's just too much, and the best you can have is an LED to flash. Now that sounds a bit primitive. An LED is just a flashing light. What can you actually do with it? Well, from the software perspective, an LED is just a bit on an output port. Typically you set it to one to make the LED come on, and zero to make it go off again. You may have more sophisticated options. You may have ones that uh, um, allow you to change colour or you may be able to change the brightness and hence do something better than just simple flashing. But if we just sit with the, the basic idea for the moment of just having an LED which you can turn on or off. Normally you write one and it comes on and you write zero and it goes off again. So how do we use that? Well we're going to use it from some critical code in order to show that that code is executing properly. So the best thing to do is to flash it from that code. <clears throat> but if you just turn it on, once you switch it on, the code could crash and it will stay on forever. So that's not very useful. So you've got to keep flashing it just to show you're doing something. And you need to make sure that that code is uh, a critical path so that the flashing is showing that real things are going on. For example, if you simply flashed it from a timer interrupt, well, that would show the device is still running, but the mainline code could be completely stuck somewhere and not doing anything useful at all. So that, that isn't a very intelligent way of dealing with the flashing of an LED. If you have multiple tasks, the same kind of thing applies. You might flash it from one task, but you need to have a reasonable assurance that the other tasks are doing what they're doing. So dedicating a task to just flashing the LED and not talking to other tasks to make sure they're okay is not a very good approach. So what do you do about flashing an LED? Do you just flash it and that's that? Well, you can take it one step further than that. The best thing to do is to flash it gently, what we would normally call a heartbeat. <clears throat> and in fact, if you can change the brightness, flashing it smoothly up and down shows that the software is really doing something. And it just looks like a device is, is behaving right when it's got a heartbeat. When you have a problem, you flash it fast. It looks like an alarm situation then, and it catches somebody's eye, it gets somebody's attention. Very simple approach, so you can convey two pieces of information. I'm okay, or I'm not okay. And that's quite flexible for just one little LED. You can go beyond that. You could go beyond it by using some sequence of pulses. So you could send uh, little pairs of pulses to indicate a particular error condition, and set to three pulses to indicate another, and, and so forth. And I would say there are limits to that, but a flash between two, three, four, five, something like that, could indicate some kind of different error condition, which even the untrained user could be um, asked how many flashes is it doing each time, and they could feed back useful information without understanding what's really going on. That is used in many real embedded systems. I can think of at least one in my house that does exactly that kind of thing. So, so long as its heartbeat is fine, I'm happy. When I see the light flashing, I think, oh dear, I've got to call the engineer. As I said, things can get more sophisticated if you've got multi-colour LEDs, if you've got more than one LED, there's lots of possibilities there. The most extreme case of communicating that someone suggested to me, which I'm not advocating, I should say, is to use multiple flashes in order to communicate in Morse code to the user. That will give you indefinite amount of communication possibility. I leave that to your discretion as to whether that's a good approach to take or not. So that's it for today. I hope that's interesting to you and I'll be back again soon with another embedded software topic. Until then, bye for now.